wanted to introduce you the head of sustainability for Google in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. In his role, he coordinates with Google's data centers, real estate, supply chain, and program teams to ensure the company is capitalizing on opportunities to advance uh, sustainability. He spent more than 15 years driving sustainable change at organization, including Amazon, when, where he led sustainability in Europe, and Max and Sponsors, where he was part of the small teams that developed their groundbreaking plan at sustainability plan. Please welcome Adam Elman. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. It's a real privilege to be here. Uh, a particular thanks to IAB for allotting time on the agenda to talk about sustainability. I struggle to believe that there is an organization in this room that shouldn't be thinking about, won't be impacted, and doesn't have an opportunity to take this topic very seriously. Um, so over the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to take you through the Google sustainability journey. Um, and particularly try and uh, highlight some of the aspects that are very relevant for the advertising industry. Um, so Google, uh, sustainability has been a founding value uh, of Google ever since uh, the company started in 1998. And we strive to build sustainability into everything we do. Uh, and in the last couple of years, our CEO has announced that we've entered our third decade of climate action. The way we think and structure our program is really across three key pillars. The first pillar we call leading at Google. This is thinking about all of our own operations, our data centers, our building, how we run our own infrastructure, how we feed our colleagues, how we think about water. And we think that's really important. It's something we've focused on for a long time. It's also where we really learn, we get to test, and we get to share our findings. But actually, we also think it's equally uh, an opportunity and our responsibility to try and help and enable others. And that's where our following two pillars fit in. So our second pillar is supporting our partners. Partners may be associations, they may be enterprise customers, they may be NGOs, governments, cities. We've got technology we believe that can help others scale up their work on sustainability and their efforts on climate. And our final pillar is enabling everyone. And again, I'll highlight how we're doing that through our solutions. So starting with our first pillar, leaning at Google. As I mentioned before, Google's been on this journey for a long time now. And actually, in our first decade, by 2007, we were the first major company to be carbon neutral in our operations. So we decreased our emissions and then offset our remaining emissions. And as you heard before, offsetting isn't, per uh, isn't perfect by any means, but we used the best tool available to us at the time. But we very quickly moved into our next phase of climate action and really focused on decarbonization with a very big focus on energy. And by 2017, we were the first, again, big organization to match 100% of our electricity use with 100% renewable electricity. And that's something we've done every year since. But whilst that was good, we needed to do more. We needed to do go further, and we needed to go faster. And the two major goals that we've set in our third decade of climate action is firstly, to be net zero carbon across both our operations and our value chain. So that's all of the organizations and the infrastructure that we rely on, both upstream and downstream. And we're looking to do that by 2030. We're also looking to be 24 seven carbon free energy. Now, what does that mean? I mentioned before we already use 100% renewable electricity. But when companies talk about using 100% renewable electricity, what they mean is by the end of the year, you look at how much electricity did you use, and you make sure you've bought enough uh, renewable electricity to match. That doesn't mean you're using the energy at the time you need it on the local grids. And we don't think that's good enough. So we're aiming for 24-7 carbon-free energy, which means we will use the energy within the hour we need it, on those local grids. It's a moonshot goal. We don't know how exactly we're going to do it. Um, we've got a lot of work on it. We're already two thirds of the way there. We have five of our data centers that already operate at 90% plus carbon free energy. 
And we've also created a compact with the UN and other organizations are also on this journey, Microsoft, and in fact, the US federal government has also committed to similar goals. So it's really challenging, but we think it's hugely important. And how are we doing? I mentioned we're making good progress. We're already sort of two thirds of the way there on our carbon free energy goal. And we're having to take big action to enable some of this. So one of the things we've um, invested time, infrastructure, technology and funding is helping to design new forms of energy certificates so you can track energy in a time bound way through the system. And that's what you can see on screen with the TX. We launched the largest ever green bond to help finance a lot of this work and enable us to invest in the infrastructure and the technology we need. But actually, whilst we are also investing in the energy we need for our own operations, that's not good enough. I mentioned earlier we've set goals around our whole value chain. And therefore, we're also investing in renewable energy to help others as well. And we've committed to invest in five gigawatts of renewable energy in manufacturing regions around the world uh, where we have suppliers manufacturing devices for, uh, for Google really trying to enable the whole ecosystem. And more recently, we announced uh, a $200 million uh, commitment into um, uh, technology-based carbon removals, actually sucking carbon out of the atmosphere. And again, we've done that alongside a number of other companies, really trying to say to the market, if you can develop the technology, if you can develop the, the solutions, we will buy them from you. And maybe just to spend a moment talking about our data centers. You've heard that we spend a lot of time investing in uh, renewables. We spend a lot of time investing in efficiency as well. Our data centers now use, are six times as more powerful in terms of compute power for the same amount uh, of energy as they were five years ago. So we're getting a lot more efficient. We are uh, buying renewable energy. We're offsetting the emissions that we can't currently deal with. And again, we're bringing technology in to help us do that. Uh, one of the technologies we developed a number of years ago is using AI um, to help manage the cooling uh, in our data centers. So something that would have been done manually before, we use technology to do that now. It automates everything, and it makes about 30% uh, energy efficiency in terms of cooling. So again, we're really using that technology as a big enabler. Now, I've spoken a lot about carbon and energy. Our agenda, as you can imagine, is much broader tackling all of the key sustainability issues. Um, so just to pick up on a couple, um, we use water both in terms of our, our offices um, and facilities, but also in terms of cooling of our data centers. It's really important for us that when we go into communities and we set up infrastructure, we're not taking away from that community, we're actually giving back. And we've committed to replenish 120% of the water we use, giving back more, as I say, than we're taking. We're also very focused on food. Um, both in terms of providing solutions to others um, who, who are focused on the topic, but also in terms of food in, in our own operations. If you've ever been to a Google office, uh, we serve pretty good food. There's quite a lot of Googlers. Um, that can lead to food waste. And it's something the business has focused on for a long time, but we want to go further. And we've committed to reduce our food waste by 50% per, per Googler. And we've also committed to send no food waste to landfill. And again, it won't surprise you, there's a lot of technology that sits behind that in terms of weighing food, looking at recipes, giving information back to our chefs about what they might need to adjust in terms of cook time or their recipes to reduce food waste. I probably should have mentioned when I was talking about data centers, um, obviously, customers that use our infrastructure for advertising get the benefit of all that work I mentioned on renewables and and uh, efficiency. And so if you are running advertising on Google infrastructure, you're already benefiting from all that work we've done to reduce those emissions and will continue to do so. And obviously that infrastructure is a big piece of what enables that digital advertising economy. So moving on and talking about how we're supporting our partners. And as I say, we have many different partners. Um, and a lot of this again is using our AI and machine learning technology to enable others. A lot of that is working with governments uh, and enterprise customers on things like looking at their supply chain, dealing with topics like deforestation, making supply chains more efficient. But we're also helping governments around the world on things like um, uh, flood predictions, looking at using uh, 
uh, technology to look at when floods, look at when we think they might happen. We're doing the same thing for, uh, for fire, looking using IR satellite information technology, both to understand when these things are happening and predict what might happen to those. And then we're able then to give out alerts to people around the world to say, hey, you need to take action. There's a fire happening in your vicinity. You need to take action. Another big partner of ours is cities around the world. And we've actually committed to help 500 cities save one gigaton of carbon on aggregate. And again, this is us bringing our technology. And we give this away free to cities. And we have a tool called the Environmental Insights Explorer. It helps cities understand the emissions associated with their buildings. It helps them understand the emissions associated with transportation. We can help them understand what's coming into their city, what's leaving the city, what's moving around the city, what modality people are using. So you've got cities like Dublin who are using this to, to improve their cycling infrastructure, using real data to plan what they want to do, monitor it, and take action. We've also got some fantastic functionality to help cities understand their opportunity for solar coverage, their opportunity to improve tree coverage. Um, and um, equally so, we've, we're working with a number of cities looking at air quality to track air pollution. And I mentioned before working with enterprise customers. Just some examples uh, here. We've been working with Unilever. They've set a big commitment around deforestation linked to palm oil. We're helping them actually monitor what's happening on the ground, making sure they can actually, uh, making sure those commitments that they've made really can stand up. We've been working with UPS to help them drive efficiency of their fleet. We've been working with Carrefour to help them on food waste, making sure they can get the right product to the right place and the right time. And we've partnered with WWF and Stella McCartney to develop a tool for the fashion industry, helping fashion designers and fashion companies really look at the science behind the fibers, where they're sourcing them from, to make sure they're making the most sustainable choices. A large part of where we focus is on helping NGOs and startups. And we do that often through our Google.org, which is our philanthropic arm of the business, where we provide both funding, but equally so Google Fellows, Google, time with Googlers to work on projects. One of the projects we uh, funded through our Google Impact Challenge was with a, uh, with a company called Normative to develop a free car carbon calculator for small medium enterprises. Small medium companies make up 90% 90 of the economy, yet they often don't have the capacity, uh, the funding, and the skills to go on the sustainability journey. So we've helped develop this carbon calculator. Again, a lot of clever technology behind it. It's available for free on something called the SME Climate Hub. And we think it's really important, and it's a way we can help others go on the journey. Now, from an advertising standpoint, uh, one of the um, initiatives that we've been very closely involved with is the Ad Net Zero initiative in the UK. Um, again, really trying to help the advertising industry move towards net zero. We've been very heavily involved with this, but I'm very aware that there are similar initiatives and discussions in Spain, in Italy, in France, and we think it's both hugely important and it's really exciting that these are taking place, equally so with IAB in Brussels. Um, so we're, we're very keen to get involved with these. My one watch out here is we can all move faster when we have a more unified plan where we can all work together. And so I think the more we can do to partner, really develop one plan, will help us all move faster and move together. Now, the final pillar is our enabling everyone pillar. And we've committed to help uh, a billion people around the world make more sustainable choices by the end of this year. And there are a number of ways that we go about this. Um, so one of the areas we've been focusing on is uh, travel and hospitality. And if you go onto Google today and look up flights, we will help you find the most uh, sustainable flight, the flight with the lowest carbon emissions. So if you go on today, we will give you the emissions associated with each flight so you can make a more informed choice. Equally so, we're doing something similar with the hotel industry. So if you go onto Google and look up hotels, we will start to surface the hotels with, who are involved with sustainability, who have cert sustainability certifications, who are focused on carbon, energy, water, waste. And again, this is a key part of how we can help advertisers and who are working heavily in this space, who have more sustainable products and surface, uh, services. How do we help surface those? How do we help everyone in the world make those more sustainable choices? Uh, the same is true in terms of search. We increasingly see people searching for recycling. How do I recycle something? Where can I recycle something? We have 
uh, business operations around the world, the business profiles, we recently launched a new functionality where businesses can add information about the recycling services that they offer. Uh, increasingly, supermarkets have front of shop recycling facilities for clothing or cans or glass. If you go onto Google today and say, you know, where can I recycle clothing near me? We will surface that information for you. Similarly, if you go onto Google and start searching on information about climate change, we've partnered with organizations like the UN to surface the most authoritative uh, and truthful information about climate change. And a big area of focus for us is around transportation. Um, we've launched a number of different features um, in transportation on Google Maps, such as around low emission zones, um, such as uh, searching for rental bikes or scooters. Uh, and we've got some great new features coming later this year. One for cyclists to give them an even simpler and easier version of Google Maps to help them when they're cycling. I'm really excited to launch our what we call eco-routing. So we already tell you how to get to A to B. Uh, later this year, we will tell you how to drive from A to B in the most eco-efficient route, which is both good for the planet and clearly if it saves fuel, saves money, it's good for everybody. So watch out for that coming later this year. So that really concludes my presentation. The one thing I want to end with is much of what we do is working with others. We don't have all the answers. It really is about partnership and collaboration and industry groups and, and businesses coming together. So if you've got thoughts or ideas, we'd love to partner with you. We'd love to work with you. We think we need everyone to focus on this to really scale up and drive action. Thanks for everybody's time.